Andrew McGahan for the MacLife.com here at the rink on the Long Mile Road. Conveniently enough, just across the road from the location where so many SBG fighters would have made their names, notably Mr. Conor McGregor. But this is his sister, Erin. Erin, hello. Fantastic. Hello. Uh, a little disappointed that my second McGregor on camera wasn't Tony, but you're a good replacement. Okay, Aww. you're a good replacement. You're the next best thing. I'm the next best, best thing to Tony? Well, <laughs> I've, for a long time, more so my mother has wanted me to interview Tony McGregor on camera. Really? So I don't know why. She's a big fan of Tony. He's a great man. Um, it's, first of all, it's freezing here. How bad was it last week when the snow was here? Oh my God, it was so bad. But, and the snow was literally knee deep, but we weren't letting that stop us. I put the welly boots on, me and Ryan just came in. We didn't care um, how cold it was. We were just willing to do whatever it took to get this dance right. What sort of commitment was needed for that? Like to a complete outsider who doesn't really know much about dancing or the preparation that would be required for it. When you first got into it, were you shocked at the amount of work that was needed or were you actually surprised at how well you were able to deal with it? Um, obviously, I've been around family members who go into fight camp. Um, I've also competed in fitness level. Um, my daughter is a dancer. So I know what it takes to be good at anything. Um, I know that everything that you're good at needs sacrifice. So no, I wasn't surprised. Um, and when I took it on, I was willing to train six to eight hours, seven days a week, whatever it took. I'm, I'm going to jump slightly, but you brought her up. Your daughter seems to be your personal tea and toast assistant at the moment, based off your Instagram story. Is, that, is it nice that maybe for once she's the one doting over you instead of you doting over her? Yeah, you know, my whole family has been really supportive. Um, it's great that they're all like coming around me. I don't have to do much washing or any of that kind of stuff anymore. They're doing everything for me. So after this, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm after being spoiled for so long. Just set the rules. Just don't refuse to go back to normal. When, <clears throat> what was your like feeling, the gut feeling before your first performance? Because you said to me before we started recording this interview that learning the steps was easy, and you thought it was going to be the hardest thing uh, when you were getting into it. So, what were the nerves like beforehand, realizing that you would overcome your initial fear, but you were maybe terrified about what was about to happen? You know, after I had Harry. Um Obviously, being from a fitness background, you have that moment when you're training and you say to yourself, I can't do it. And there would always be that moment where I say, yeah, I can and I'll rise up from it. But after I had Harry, I kind of lost that little, I call it the grit. You know, when you grit your teeth and you go, oh, I can do it. I kind of lost that um, when I had Harry. So I was a little bit nervous that I wasn't going to find that again. Um, and the, the day of the actual show, I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this. And backstage, you know, my dance partner, Ryan, was like, Erin, when am I going to see this, you know, motivated, determined person? And I was like, I don't know if she's going to ever come back again. Um, but when I went out there and I, I heard the music and the energy of the crowd and I put my hand up, and that was probably the first time in like two years that I saw that part of myself come back out. And I was like... I can do this. But you would have been very in touch with that part of you before you had your son as well. I read an interview the other day that spoke about your boxing training, your fitness training. You really threw yourself into fitness for a long time. So it was more so recapturing that essence as opposed to discovering it for the first time. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been part of everything I do. I mean, no matter what I do, I put 100% in. I think it's a bit of a family trait. You know, uh, we give everything that we have into something, whatever it is we're doing, whether it was my hairdressing career or my fitness or being a mother. Um, yeah, so that's definitely something that's inside us. Speaking of mothers, okay, and we talked about this beforehand, how delighted is your mom that she gets to go to RT with you every week to Dancing in the Stars? She must love the behind the scenes aspect of it, because you were saying that how different it can be watching something on TV, but then actually getting to be there behind the scenes. Being behind the scenes is brilliant. I mean, the energy that that uh, audience has every Sunday night is, it's it's pulsating. They literally just get behind you. And it's great for her every week. Like, we're making memories. This this whole journey for us, including Connor's journey and now my journey, it's literally been a journey. And we're making memories as a family. Um, every Sunday, she gets her hair blow dried and her makeup put on. And she knows all the dancers. She knows all the crew. And she knows what it takes, uh, what goes on behind the scenes. Because people... People don't get to see that, yeah. the cameramen. Like the first time I went on stage, I was so nervous. I forgot that there was people behind those cameras and they actually started cheering me on. And I was like, oh, you know, and that was great because you forget about all the people that are actually helping make this journey work for me. 
I think it's uh, it's refreshing to hear you speak as openly and as honestly about it because through your own words you weren't in a great place beforehand because after having Harry you weren't sure if you were going to be able to like maybe get back into the fitness routine or get back into doing the things that you felt made you you. Yeah, look, I mean, being uh, being a parent the second time around uh, as an older person, you know, I was so happy that I was able to stay at home with him and was in a great position to be able to spend so much time. But being at home all the time, I got stuck in a rut and I kind of felt that I lost a little part of myself and I didn't know how to get back out there. So when this opportunity came, came to me, I didn't even know if I was going to take it. Um, and when I took it, I can't believe the difference in me. Like the girl from 10 weeks ago to now, you know, backstage last week, I said to Ryan, don't worry, we have this. You know, compared to week one, when he was telling me, come on, Mick, come on, Minnie McGregor, you know, let's do this. So this journey has definitely been incredible for me. What are, what's your reaction to the support that you've been getting? Because I know that you're kind of towing the line in what you've said, that it's great to get all of these comments and you're, you appreciate the support so much. But at the same time, you also have to ignore all of the negative comments because it being the internet people are just literally going to put a bad comment up for the sake of it. Yeah. So how do you take the good energy from the supportive comments, but not give a second thought to any of the negative ones? I think that in itself has been a big journey for me. Um, probably the first week was, was quite difficult when I saw those negative comments. They kind of hurt me a little bit. Um, but I've kind of grown, and now I choose to go, you know what, that's actually your stuff and not my stuff. The support, especially among... The, the mothers out there that are literally coming out in their droves to get behind me because they know what it feels like. They, they know what it feels like to be sitting at home in their house co, minding their babies going, I'd love to do something for myself, but I just don't know what that something is. So yeah, I, I have a choice. I either focus on the negative or I focus on the positive and I choose to focus on the positive. Do you, the way you're talking is it's full of confidence, you know, and it's a serious message because you've experienced it, you've come through it, and now are achieving things from it. Do you see yourself getting into this line of work maybe after Dancing with the Stars, whether it's uh, speaking to like a personality or speaking to mothers or something around the topic of like, because you're very pro-female. I know you said that in the email before. Women stick together massively in your eyes. Do you see yourself getting into that work? I don't know what that work could even be, but it seems like that you're passionate about this to the point that you're saying good stuff that people are going to want to listen. Look, I'm a, a big believer of positive thinking and the law of attraction. And I told you just before the interview um, that I remember a few years ago listening to a YouTube video by Alan Watts, If Money Was No Object. And when I sat and thought about that, my answer to that question was, what would you do, Aaron, if money was no object? And it was dance. And that was about five years ago. And the universe literally came in at the right time when I was sitting at home in my house co a little bit lost and confused and didn't know if I was ever going to find that part of myself again and dancing came to me and, and I took the opportunity so I definitely believe that it's going to happen the universe is going to give me that whatever the opportunity I don't know what the opportunity is is but I definitely have faith that the, the opportunity is going to come and it's going to be the right thing for me at the right time. Um, a little bit of Mary McGahan trivia here. She's a big Dancing with the Stars fan, but she says the UK version go on a live tour. The same with the X Factor, do like live concert tours. Is there any chance that something like that could be happening within Ireland for all of you guys? That So after the competition, it's not just, we don't know what Aaron's going to be doing next. Maybe people could uh, could go and see you doing a live show. Have you been told anything about that? You know, I definitely have heard um, some sort of uh, rumours maybe in the background that it's something that they would definitely like to do. Um, I think it would be great for Ireland. The amount of people that love that show, that love dancing, I think it would be great for uh, Dancing with the Stars to go on tour around Ireland and bring the show to live audiences in arenas or um, theatres. Yeah. Or even uh, I, when we were talking, this week's theme is swing dancing. Swing dancing. It's yeah. huge up north, in, uh, up the northeast, Carrick, Macross, Monaghan, all of those places. They love a bit of jiving. So even going to like hotels or conference centres like that, put the show on there and maybe have a big communal party and effectively like do a theme in different cities yeah. would you be up for that i come here if i can dance dry for three minutes in this competition after doing my own dance i'd be up for anything dance is brilliant for everybody and i just think it just brings out the best in everybody i have one last thing to ask you years ago in interviews connor used to always talk about the secret and you've spoken about the secret here as well were you who the person at the time it was just me sister were you this sister or was it Aoife who introduced I'm him to this sister i'm the sister and funny um you know, I definitely believe 
in the secret and the law of attraction. But what would happen to me is somewhere I would manifest things in and then maybe feel like I didn't deserve it or, you know, I wasn't good enough and they would go again. But I've reached the point in my life where I'm like, you know what, I do deserve it. And yeah, and I have the book, The Secret, in my training bag and I actually bring it out um, on the most days and definitely on show day on the Sunday and sometimes you know if me and Ryan are tired or getting overwhelmed I'll say do you know what let's just read I just open it randomly and read a passage it's nice to have it there more as a comfort there as opposed to the, the knowledge is there and you can recall it if you need it and funny I remember uh, they talk about writing a list you know like a manifestation list and I wrote a list a long time ago probably 10 years ago about where I'd like to live and um, exactly where it was and how close it was to my daughter's school and and it looks like that manifestation is literally just about to happen you know and and that there sometimes you would have thought it yeah sometimes it just takes time amazing Aaron this quarterfinals this weekend and dancing with the stars two themes uh, so you're dancing twice at the weekend twice, twice at the weekend dancing. Um, we wish you the very best of luck in the competition hopefully the next time we speak it will be as the winner of dancing with the stars in Ireland 2018 thank you very much Thanks very much